and we're recording. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Spud here, obviously. Uh, I want to say a massive thanks to everyone who commented on that video earlier on today. I think it's cool to get you guys involved and it helps me out because um, you know, it takes time to make the videos and I guess if it's what you really want to watch um, then it's going to be more worthwhile. So if the title hasn't given it away already then today I'm going to teach you how to play my version of Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. Huge shout out to all my new subscribers and thank you so much for all the comments, the thumbs up on everything that I've been doing recently. It means a lot and I'm going to be bringing you more stuff like this in the near future. So if you want to see that and you're not a subscriber, hit subscribe, thumb up this video, share it with your friends. Peace. Alright, so the intro is this descending repetitive riff, which is going to start on the 4th fret of the G with the 3rd finger and then the 2nd fret of the G with the 1st. You're then going to hit the 4th fret of the D, the 2nd fret of the D and the open. And then you're going to hit the 2nd fret of the A. Okay, so you can practice that you can practice it by itself and try and get it in time with the song the tricky bit is going to be adding the open B string in between every single note now I'm doing a little bit of palm mute in there to keep it clean, but you can do it without the palm muting. You can do it with, I think that kind of sounds more like how it's played. Now there is a delay that's going on there as well. Um, but right now, for the sake of me just kind of playing at a free tempo, I'm just um, doing it without the delay. So the best thing to do, like I said, is to just learn the individual notes and then just practice string skip into that open B in between each one. And once you get it um, up to speed, put the delay on and uh, do what Slash does. You can kind of just play a bit at the start, check the uh, BPM of the delay and then play to it. Alright, so now we've got the intro solo. We're going to start with the 7th fret hammer on to the 9 on the D. And we're going to pick the 7 and the 9 on the G. Bend up a whole step. Down, and then hit the 7 on the G. Okay. Hammer on again, 7 to 9 on the D. Pick the 9 and slide down to the 2nd fret. After that we're moving up to a power chord, which is rooted to the 9th fret of the D string. So we're going to play 9, 11, 12, going across the D, G, B. You're going to strum those three together, you're going to hit them again and slide down two frets, and then strum that chord again when you get there. Again, when you get to the seventh fret, you're going to hit that one again and slide down to the second fret of the D and strum that power chord. D5 chord, so second fret of the G, third fret of the B, strum from the open D, and then an A5 power chord. You're going to bar your first finger across the second fret of the D, second fret of the G and then hit that from the open A. Okay, now we're going to do some heavy palm muting with the right hand. And we're going to have this little ascending pattern. Second fret of the A to the fourth fret. Second fret of the D to the fourth fret. Same again on the G. Third fret of the B to the 5th fret, so that's just moved up a fret, but it's the same finger in. Then we're going to bend that 5th fret up a whole tone. 
put your little finger on the high E and then hit the fifth fret of the B again whilst it's still bent. Bring it down. Hit the third fret of the B and the five again. It's a cool little technique to have anyway. If you've not done anything like that before, you know, you can use it. Um, Uh, in improvising or or whatever, but yeah, so and then you can do a big power slide ready to go into the verse. So these are the things I'm going to show you in the verse. I'm going to show you the rhythm. I'm going to show you this lick and this one. And then I'll also show you the and then I'll kind of like go on to the next part, okay? So I showed you that A5 power chord a second ago, which was the open A and the second fret of the D and the G. You're going to start with two downstrokes on that, okay? Then you're going to take your second finger and you're going to play the third fret of the E string. Okay, and you're going to do two downstrokes there. Okay. I'm doing that kind of second one a bit weird because you're about to go straight into an upstroke on the A. Okay. And then you're going to do another one. So I go two down on the A, two down on the G, and then two up on the A. Next bit is simple, you're going to hit the third fret, second fret, and then the open E. Just to give it a little bit more like chug, I just sort of keep a little bit of palm muting going on for the uh, low E string. It's just the way I play it, I like it that way. Um, yeah, so he does that one the first time. Second time I hear it kind of, there's like a little flick to the wrist. So you've got this like down, down, up. As far as I can remember, I think it's it only sort of happens when it first kicks in. So you'd go... Just gives a slight variation to that second repeat. But yeah, that's that part. Okay. And that just repeats over and over again. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you the next power chord um, section because it's the same rhythm. So you're going to come up to the seventh fret of the A string and you're going to play seven and nine on the D with your third finger. I like to use my fourth finger, I'm lazy. So I'm gonna do it that way, but you can use your third finger if you want. Uh, and the power chord shapes are gonna be seven, five, seven, five, four, two. Again, sort of when it starts to come down to the 542, I, I bring a little bit of palm muting in, and that kind of, um, again, it just sort of fattens it out a bit for me. And you can see I'm just comfier with that sort of lazy stretch with the fourth finger. Um, but yeah, it's the same picking pattern again. That's quite tricky because it's, it's moving power chords um, accurately and fast, but if you practice it, you'll get it. All right, so that first kind of filler. It's a really cool kind of slash lick. He does this in other songs as well. But um, if you can hit a pinched harmonic, by all means throw it in. But yeah, so we're going to start on the 7th fret of the G and it's it's a kind of cool 
lazy bend up and down and then a pull off to the five with your index finger. So I bring my third finger down to the D and then flatten it back onto the G. Okay. And then you're just going to kind of descend down an A blues scale. So. Just a simple box shape, 7, 5, 7, 5, G and D. And then from the uh, 7 on the A, you're going to go chromatic. Quick slide down to the 3rd fret of the A. And then you're going to pick Five three five three on the A and E. Again, I like to use my fourth finger here. Something about kind of having that um, hand position here. The fourth finger for me just kind of naturally falls into that space but you can use your third finger to tie it to you. So the next riff I'm going to show you is this one. Okay. What I do is I hammer on from the third fret of the E to the fifth fret. Then I hammer on from the third fret of the A to the fourth fret. Bring your hand in percussively and then do an upstroke on the 5th fret of the E. After you've done that, you can do an upstroke on the 3rd fret of the E. From there, you're going to do a hammer on from the 3 to the 4 again on the A string. And then you can go 5, 3 on the E string and slide up to the 7th fret of the A. Okay. So you can hear that there's just a couple of times where I'm bringing the hand in percussively which is what kind of gives it that choppy feeling. give it some speed, it, um, it's not as obvious but it, it still sounds cool. So if we're moving into the chorus, you're going to start on the 3rd fret of the A, 2nd finger, before going to the 2nd fret, and the 5th fret of the E, then the 3rd fret. Okay. If you just wanted to play that particular part, you would just then move the whole thing up two frets. But what I've done after the five and the four on the A, I'm going to come up to the twelfth fret of the top three strings, do a down up mute like that, and then hit those top three strings and slide down. And it's worth pointing out that you should do your little um, picked mutes on the way over. So you're not trying to get there because you'll end up hitting harmonic. You don't want to do that, so. Okay. next part, 7th fret of the A to the 5th fret, you're going to hit the 7 twice, and the 5th fret once. I like to do it again like another percussive little 
it's just like a tap or maybe a, a muted stroke. It's kind of like a downwards muted stroke. And then I catch that sixth fret of the uh, E with the second finger. Uh, and on an upstroke. Whenever I do it, I kind of give it like a little, a little pull and then some vibrato. Uh, and then we're going fifth fret of the E, third fret, open. Okay, so if that came out of here. Last one, hammer on from the 5 of the A to the 7th fret, okay, then you're going to hit the 6, 5, and then 3, 4, first and second finger, because what it's basically doing is chromatically ascending back up from like G to A, but uh, I like to go... back into that. So that section in full if you want it. So the first solo is going to come out of this section. I'm going to do this the 11th fret of the G and the 12th fret of the B and hit it three times. Okay, after you've done that, if you've got a Les Paul, um, you're going to flick over to the neck pickup. Um, you can do the same on a strap or whatever. Um, but yeah, we're going to go into this section. Okay, so that first little bit we're going to take the 11th fret of the D and the 12th fret of the G with the index and the second finger and you're going to slide one fret at that moment you can take the pressure off and do two muted downstrokes okay. it's sometimes, and well I say take the pressure off, it's sometimes easy to get some other fingers involved so that, like I said before, you don't catch harmonics Okay. After you've done that, you're then going to take your third finger and your middle finger and you're going to place them on 14 of the D and 13 of the G. Two down strokes. Quickly flatten out your first finger to the 12 on the B and the G. go back to that 14 and 13 that you were doing prior. Okay. So the guitar solo, the first guitar solo is going to come out of this section. And it's going to start with that. It's the 11th fret of the G and the 12th fret of the B. Three down strokes. At that moment, you can change your pickup to the neck pickup for a slightly fatter sound. And we're going to go into this section. Okay, so 11th fret of the D, 12th fret of the G, index and middle finger, play and slide up a fret. When you do that, I like to bring my third finger over here so that when we do some muting, we don't get any of the harmonics by accident. Like that, we're going to go slightly um, deader, if deader is a word. Okay, from that point, we're going to take our third finger to the 14th fret of the D, and our uh, third finger is going to stay on the 13 on the G. 
can hit that twice. Then you're going to flatten out the first finger to the 12 on the G and the B. Okay. And then go back to the 14 and the 13. There's two more mutes after that. And then I like to use my first and second fingers now on the 12 of the G and the B. Even though you could use your first finger, I feel like I can control my vibrato a little bit more with two fingers. Okay. After that, you're gonna take your index finger on the 12th fret of the G, slide up a fret. And the same again, you're going to bring some of the fingers flat over here to just mute. Okay. Once you've done that, keep the first finger where it is on the 13, put the second finger back on the 14th fret of the D, and now put your third finger on the 15th fret of the B. Okay. And you've got that same two downstroke rhythm. there you're going to take your first finger to the 15th fret of the G and your index finger on the 14th fret of the B and then slide up the fret. Okay. After you've done that you're going to do two mutes as you slide in all the way up to fret 19 of the G and fret 20 of the B with the second and third fingers. So you've got so so far I will recap because it can get a bit messy. Um, Back over to your bridge pickup there. You can slide all the way up to fret 18 on the G, 17 on the B, and then you're kind of going to like over bend the uh, 19th fret of the E. It's like a tone and a half, isn't it? Or a whole, whole and half step. You're going to come down, hit the 19 and then the 18 with the uh, second finger. Position change here, put your third finger on the 17th fret. Bend up a whole step and let it down. After that you can take the first finger on the 15th fret of the E and hammer on the second finger to the 16. And then 15th fret of the B with the index finger. So now we have this really cool riff. Okay, that is basically the same thing twice in a row, but an octave apart, and then the ending is a little bit different. So we slide up to the 12 on the E, and we go to the 10 on the E, then the 12 on the B and the 11 on the B. Okay. Then you're going to go to the 10th fret of the B, bend up and down, pull off to the 8, and then pick the 10 and the 8. Okay. Then start from the 9th fret of the G, pretty much do the same thing again. So it'll be 9, 7, 9, 8, coming down onto the D. Shift back to the 7 on the D, bend that up and pull off to the 5. Okay. And then we're going to 
slide up to the 9 on the G with the 3rd finger and come back chromatically, 9, 8, 7. In full. So here's that middle section. Okay, so the first one is a D major, but we're only hitting the top three strings. So second fret of the G, third fret of the B, second fret of the E. And slide up to the fifth fret, talking about the uh, index and middle fingers. And the seven, and then back to the five, and then the two, okay? So that's pretty much what happens. Now we're going to put the little finger on the third fret, pull off, and hit the B. And then go back to the five again, and up to the seven. When you get up here, you can do that same pull off, but you're going to hit the B and the G after it. So. Now we're going to come back to that first position of D. I'm going to start with that pull off though. And again, you're going to hit all of the notes. So you've come from here. Okay. Hit the five, seven. Do a simple pull off now, where you only hit the B string. Hit the five. Okay, and then back to the D. So, so far. So after you've strummed that D, you're then going to do the pull off and you're going to hit the B, the G and the D this time. Best thing to, to do would be to just watch maybe the, the first time when I played it through full, because um, it's not too hard as it is, literally one shape and a certain amount of notes and pull-offs and just try and follow what I do. Kick some distortion back on, you're going to do a power chord on the 3rd fret of the E. Hit that 5 times. Back down to F, fret 1. And you're going to come up to the 5th fret, A. Okay. So again, this is quite a long solo and I don't want the video to be too long, so I'm kind of going to flow through it pretty quick and if you want to stop it and rewind, I'll leave that up to you um, rather than just repeating myself. So um, going into the big second solo, I do this. It kind of matches Axel's vocal. So that's... Um, the 19th fret of the G and I have my first finger on the 15th fret of the B and I'm just bending that third finger up to match the first and I go so it's up twice and then up twice again but quicker but now that second time you let it down Okay, then we're going to go, so that's up, up, down, up, up.
take that exact thing you've just done and bring it to the 12th and the 14th fret. Okay. Have your first finger flat over the 12 on the E, then the B. Then you're going to hit the 15 with your fourth finger on the B. Okay, then you're going to bend the 14th fret of the G up, pull off to the 12th fret. Then take your 15th fret and you're going to bend that up a whole step. And then down to the 15. So for the next part of the solo, we're going to slide down to the 4th fret of the A, hit the 2nd fret of the D, back to the 4, take your 3rd finger to the D string, fret 4, whole step bend, then take your 1st finger to the 2nd fret of the D, hammer onto the 4 and slide to the 6. Okay, once you get there, go to the G, fret 4 and 6 with the index and 3rd finger. I do a quick sort of down, up, mute here. This is kind of like, I don't know whether it's some slash puts in, get it from Jimmy Page, all this kind of percussive. Uh, the percussive elements that I'm playing, but I like them anyway, so I do a down up mute and then index finger on the 5th fret of the B, 2nd finger on the 6th fret of the G, then bend the 7 on the B up and down, bit of vibrato, then you're going to bend that up again, pull it down quick and pull off to the 5. Then take the 3rd finger on the 7th fret of the B, 4th finger on the 7th fret of the E, play them together but just bend the 3rd finger. Okay. So whilst they're still bent, play them again and, and let them down. And pull off to the 5. Four on the G and the six. You can either do it with your second finger, or slide, or you could pick both. Okay. Just to recap that a little bit for you. Whoa. So then we're going to slide. Uh, from the 4 to the 6 on the G with the 2nd finger, to the 5 on the B and back to the 6. Now you're going to hit the 5 on the B with the index finger and the open E, and you'll recognise this bit. So you're going to go 5, 5, 3, 2. Then we're going to shift to the G and the B, uh, so you've got the open B ringer now and we're playing the 4th fret of the G, it's the same note. Okay. From there we're going to grab the 2nd fret of the G and B, with, I like to do this with my 2nd and 3rd fingers, because we can bend up, pull off and then pick them on the 2nd fret again, and then we play the open G and B but hammer on the index finger to fret 1. You can put a little bit of palm muting in here, it kind of adds to it. So that bit is from the 1 on the G, you play that with the open B then the 2nd finger on the 2nd fret, and then the 4th fret. Sounds like jackass. <laughs> yeah? And then you go 
go back to the two and the one. <laughs> And the fourth fret of the uh, of the D. Do you remember when we did that a second ago? You're gonna do the same uh, now, but on these strings. Okay. And I hammer on open to one ear. It sounds grim, but when you do it in speed, it's just kind of a bit like dissonant. I kind of like it. So yeah, that second half is. Now we're going to bend the 15th fret of the B up a whole step. Let it down. Bend the 14th fret up of the G. Let that down. Okay. Now we've got to bend the 14th fret up and down. Pull off to the 12th. Second finger now on the 14th fret of the D. Slide back to the 12 and back up to the 14. And then you're going to put um, your third finger on the 14th fret of the B. Play three strings, but you're only going to hear two, and then slide back two frets. So then you come down to the 6th fret of the G, bend it down, half step, then hit the 4, same on the D, come to the 4th fret of the A, to the 2nd fret, and then this one's a bit different, we bend down, hit the open E and then the 2nd fret. So you can have some fun with a bottle of beer or pick scraping or whatever in the middle section. Um, there's this cool exit to that section. Uh, which is just moving chromatically. So we're going to start with the power chord on the second fret of the E. I'm just going to shout out the fret numbers for you now, okay? So we've got two, one, two, three, five, four, five, six, just like back and forth and up. Okay. I do this kind of just for a little bit of effect. But yeah, uh, after that, you're straight back into... So that little outro sequence is very, very similar to what I showed you before. Okay, but the notes are just a little bit different. So, still got your hammer on up here. A six, five, three open. I'm going to hammer on from the 3 to the 5, okay, hit the 3, and then open, okay. To finish, got this E7 with a sharp 9, Hendrix chord, so that's the 7th fret of the A, 6th fret of the D, 7th fret of the G, and the 8th fret of B, which is sharp 9. So you're going to go... End on that E7 sharp 9. You have a little bit of fun. Messing around. E blues or whatever, bit of E Dorian, and um, smoke it. Guys, are you still there? We've made it to the end. 
I'm aware it's quite a lengthy video, but I put the effort in and I made sure I covered every section that I did in, in my version, anything I thought you would want to learn or know a little bit about. And if you think about, you know, taking a real guitar lesson once a week for an hour like most people do, 40 minutes give or take is not is not much for a, for a condensed version of it. And um, take it at your own pace, do it over a few days, you know. Go have fun. Show me what you got!